Let's take a look at problem number two here. So hopefully you took a look at question one or the video from that one if you needed any help on that. Uh, if not, then we can pick up right, uh, right from question two here regardless. All right, so we've got this airplane that's accelerating from rest to 102 meters per second in 12 seconds. We want to diagram this scenario. Um, I had some questions in terms of how to how to diagram the line here. Does it have to be like a diagonal, like a plane would be taking off, or could it be straight? It really doesn't matter. I I thought of this as just in terms of the horizontal direction, since we're not looking at two two dimensional motion where we would be dealing with angles. But uh, just a flat line is fine. If you drew it on an angle, not a big deal either. All right. So since this thing is accelerating we would expect in the very first time increment that we didn't cover very much distance, but in the next time increment we would cover more distance, right? So this distance over here is different than the distance to begin with, which is much less. Uh, and then our next time increment there would be more distance that we covered, and then the next time increment there'd be a ton more uh, time that, or time, sorry, a ton more distance that we would cover. My apologies. So. It looks like uh, this would be acceleration, right? We wouldn't have very much velocity in order to go the distance that we're going here. We'd have a lot more velocity in order to go this, this much larger distance here. So in other words, we're accelerating. If you wanted to add in anything else, that's fine. But if you just left your diagram like this alone, I would know exactly what you mean. All right, for the graphs below, let's go ahead and take a look at those. So my displacement, Let's think about what's happening. So right here would be zero meters. I don't know how far we're going, but I do know that it's going to be further away from zero. So this might be you know, 100, it might be 1,000 meters. I just, I don't know. But I do know that I'm starting at zero. So I'm starting at this point, and I'm getting further away. Really, we don't know which direction we're flying. So you could do this in either the top quadrant or the, uh, or the bottom. Uh, I look at it as usually if we don't know the direction, let's just go with to the right. But my displacement, it's not going to look like this, right? That means that I have a constant velocity in order to make that happen. My distance is actually changing, or my displacement is changing. We're going a little bit at first, and then we're getting faster and faster and faster. And so I would expect to see more of this curved shape, right? Not covering very much distance at all, actually. In this case, how I drew it, it looks like we're at rest. Then by the time I get over to maybe like this time increment here, I've covered just a tiny bit of distance there. But by the time I go from this time increment to this time increment, I clearly we've covered a lot of a lot of distance there. So in other words, we must be speeding up in order to make this uh, happen. All right. So for my velocity, we know that we're increasing our velocity, right? Because we are accelerating. And accelerating, remember, generically just means that it's a change in velocity. So it doesn't necessarily mean increase. It could also mean decrease. But in our case, we are going from, from rest right, to 102 meters a second. So in other words, we must be speeding up in order to make that happen. So going from a velocity of 0 up to some other velocity and again we don't we don't know the uh, all all of the velocities in between we can assume that we're going from zero to one to two to three so on and so forth until we get up to 102 meters per second somewhere around here you don't even have to label that though as long as you know velocity is increasing we're in good shape all right so for my acceleration then what would that look like well my velocity it's it's increasing at a constant rate right this isn't bent this isn't a curved line over here uh, so since it is going at a gradual rate, if we broke this up into some different time increments, it looks like we're increasing our velocity a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more in each one of these time increments. So that means that my acceleration is going to be constant. But think about what acceleration means to begin with. Acceler acceleration means speeding up. So constantly speeding up would be, in this case, in the positive region here. Remember, it is possible to have a... a Acceleration in the negative region, that means we're speeding up as well. But in the case where that we're dealing with here, our displacement is in the positive direction, which makes our velocity in the positive direction. If our velocity is in the positive direction and our acceleration is in the positive, then we're speeding up. If my velocity were in the negative, then that would also mean that my acceleration were in the negative, and that would also be speeding up. So either we could draw this scenario like it is, or it could be a mirror image because, again, we really don't know the direction that the plane is going. Is it going to the right or is it going to the left? Uh, safe bet is to leave it in the upper, upper quadrant, though.
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the calculation here. Uh, we know that there's there's three formulas to deal with. Uh, I've got my velocity formula. Uh, we've got an acceleration formula. When, when we deal with two different velocities, we can figure out what our acceleration is using this one. And of course, we've got the other one that is generally the one that's a little bit less well-liked because of all the stuff that's going on with it. All right, so let's see which one of these makes the most sense to use. Well, since we are, in fact, speeding up, so accelerating, we've got to make sure that our formula has acceleration in it, which automatically gets rid of this top one. It has no acceleration in there, so it doesn't make sense to use. All right, some other things that we know. Well, we know our initial velocity, right, from rest, that would be a velocity of zero meters per second, and we know we get up to another velocity, so that would be a final velocity right there. We know this happens over the course of 12 seconds. All right, so it looks like I have two different velocities. This formula down here only has one velocity, so that doesn't make sense. It narrows it down to the formula in the middle there. All right, so we don't know our acceleration, right? That's the whole purpose of doing this problem is we're trying to calculate it, what it would be. So I don't know A. I'm going to get ready for my VF, VI, and T to go ahead and drop in here. Uh, I know my final velocity, right? We said before that it was 102 meters per second. 102 meters per second. My initial velocity was zero, and my time was 12 seconds, and it does actually tell us again 12 seconds in the problem so we can go from there. If we wanted to, we could show another sub-step showing 102 minus 0 is just 102 over 12. We don't have to do that necessarily. I would know what you mean by doing 102 divided by 12. And let's see, 102 divided by 12 gives me 8.5. Not done yet. Because uh, think, what is that 8.5? It's 8.5 meters per second squared. The squared does matter. Uh, because meters per second, if I were to draw out a diagram here, that would mean that I'm traveling a certain amount of meters in each one of these seconds, if each, each of those arrows represented a second. Uh, this would be a constant velocity here, right? Because my meters are staying the same. For acceleration, though, I'm actually increasing my speed. So to begin with, I'm going at some sort of meters per second, my velocity, in one second. My next second, I'm increasing my meters per second or my velocity in that second and so on and so forth so what's actually happening here is I'm literally increasing my meters per second or my velocity every single second that I'm in the air for or on the road for or whatever an object might be doing in this case in the air All right so we're literally increasing our meters per second per second which is a lot nicer to just write meters per second squared All right so for the explanation here there's a bunch of things we could talk about um, but what we could say is the, the final answer is it's reasonable because we are traveling in the in the positive direction. We would expect a positive acceleration. Another thing we could say is we'd expect our velocity and our acceleration to both be in the same direction if we're speeding up. They'd be in opposite directions if we're slowing down. Um, another thing that we could say here is, well, this is happening over 12 seconds. So if you're increasing your speed by eight meters, eight and a half meters a second, for 12 seconds, then you would expect to, to travel a total of 102, or be traveling by a total of 102 meters per second by the time this thing took off. All right. So the important part, though, is well, why is it why is it a positive answer? Because we're speeding up here. All right. Uh, so part three to come soon.